This is WP Living with a tutorial on how to make your default WordPress installation into a multi-site installation. So switching from a single site to a multi-site, a network version of WordPress. And we're going to do this in three simple steps. And if you follow the steps correctly, it shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. In fact, it's possible to do it in just five. I'm going to go through through the, the three steps, but before that, I want to outline the things you need in order to do this. And these are things that I'm going to assume that you have already in place. But let's just run through those right now. First of all, you're going to need a, your own domain, and you're going to have to have WordPress installed on that domain. Um, and so I'm going to assume that you've got WordPress up and running and you're able to access the admin panel of WordPress. Um, the second thing is you should have access to your hosting control panel. And the most popular control panel or the most widespread, particularly on budget web hosting, is cPanel. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you're using cPanel although similar manipulations can be done across other hosting admin panels. Um, this is all fairly standard stuff, so don't worry if you don't have cPanel. Um, those are the two requirements. The third requirement is having FTP access, file transfer protocol access, to your domain files. And there are two, at least two ways to do that, to access those files. The first is to access them through, through your admin panel. And I'll show you in a moment how that works with cPanel. The other option is to have a third-party application, an FTP uh, app that allows you to connect with your hosting. Uh, an example, I'm using Mac here. An example for Mac is Coda. Um, but there are a whole number of free options um, that you can, I'll list those in the footer to this video, okay? So, this is what Coda looks like on Mac. Basically, it allows me to access the files on my domain, and it's usually the main folder is the public underscore HTML folder. And this is um, basically what it looks like. If you don't have an FTP client installed on your machine, whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux, you can use your cPanel. And to do this, log in. And I'm using, my host is HostGator, as you can see. And this is the, the layout for the cPanel for HostGator. Um, if you're using another hosting service, it will look a little differently. But basically, the same things should appear. What you want to look for is the files section and the file manager icon here. If we click on file manager it will bring up a pop-up window and here you want to make sure that the default setting is the web root that means the public HTML folder that's what you want to access and also make sure that it shows show hidden files is clicked that should be ticked okay so that's going to allow us to access a file that we need to see later on in the uh, process so go to that, it opens a new window, and here we are in the wpliving.net files, and the root, or the, 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 the start of this folder, this um, public HTML folder, houses my WordPress installation. Yours may be under different folder names, but basically you want to access the H public HTML folder, right? So that's how you're going to manipulate the files later on. Uh, and this works just as well as doing it with an FTP client. OK, so those are the basic requirements. A WordPress installation, access to FTP to your files, and access to your control panel. OK, let's get started with the installation of the multi-site. You basically want to find your WordPress installation. Uh, as I said before, mine is at the root of my public uh, HTML folder. And in that installation, you want to look um, for the file called wpconfig.php. It's this one here, wp-config.php. And we're going to edit that file. And to do that in cPanel, you highlight the file, and then you click the Edit button here. 
Before editing anything in cPanel, as a general rule, it's good to back up your original files. And a simple way of doing that is to download the file you're going to edit. So this, in this case, wp-config, I can click download, and that will initiate the download to my documents folder. And there it's stored on my hard drive now, so in case I mess up my configuration, I can always go back to the original. Once you've done that, you've backed everything up, uh, you're ready to edit. So wp-config, and then you can click edit. This opens a new screen, and here you can see the editing, uh, the file content. And what we want to do is add a piece of code in here. It looks daunting, but don't worry, it's simple. If you scroll through this, you'll find a line towards the end that says, that's all, stop editing, happy blogging. And basically, you want to add a line, the following line of code anywhere before that, basically. It has to be before that line. So I'm going to do it literally just before. And you want to add this code. And it is the following. Define parentheses and quote wp underscore allow underscore multi-site end quote comma space true end parentheses, parentheses and then semicolon. Uh, make sure that the WP allow multi-site is capitalized and uh, that you close your line of code with the semicolon. So add that. Once you've added it and you've checked that it's correct, you can then save the changes. And now you can go back to your WordPress dashboard. Okay, so let's move on to step two. And in step two, we're simply going to follow the instructions here on the WordPress admin panel. There are three things to do. The first is to create a blogs.dir directory. And that's back in our cPanel uh, files manager. I'll show you how to do that in a second. The second thing is to once more add some code to the wp-config file that we just manipulated. And I'll show you that too. And then finally, we're going to manipulate a file called .htaccess, and it's that file that I ask you to click the Show Hidden Files button earlier on. It's for that file that we need that, because normally it may not appear in your uh, file tree, your structure, uh, and I'll show you how that works also later on. So let's start with number one, creating a blogs.di directory. It asks us, to, asks us to create that directory in the following address. Basically, at the root of your domain public uh, HTML folder, and then in your w in your WordPress installation, your WP content folder. So let's have a look what that means in the cPanel. And I'm back on my cPanel WordPress installation. Um, so it's here in the WP content folder. It's in here. In here, we're going to create one more folder. So we click on new folder. And the name of it should be blogs dir and create new folder and there it is blogs.dir and it should be the default settings that's all fine so that's step one is done um, we can now go back to the admin uh, panel and go on to step two so add the following to your wp config php file and uh, let's highlight this code and copy it and go back to the cPanel again and go to up one level to the root of the installation. And I'm going to select the same file that I selected earlier, wp-config. I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to go back to the same place that I added that little line of code earlier, right here. And beneath that, and just above this line, remember, that's all stop editing. Just above that line, I'm going to paste in my code. So there it is. And once you've done that, you save it. And now you can close this window. And you can go back to your WordPress admin panel for, for the third and final manipulation. Here we need to add the following code to the .htaccess file. So I'm going to highlight the code. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to locate this .htaccess file. I'm going to go back to my uh, cPanel and the root of my domain, 
and it's right here, .ht access. Now this wouldn't show if I hadn't ticked earlier, show hidden files. You wouldn't see it, but it's still there nonetheless. So if you can't see the .ht access uh, file, make sure um, you've got show hidden files switched on. If you don't have a .ht access file, you can open a notepad or text edit um, application and simply create one yourself and save it as .ht access uh, and upload it to your um, root to the root of your WordPress installation. I happen to have one. I'm going to edit it. Uh, first, I'm going to download it and save it, but now I'm going to edit it. And basically, they ask us to replace the other WordPress rules. This is crucial. Uh, sorry, go back to that. So we're going to going to replace this code. And we can keep the begin WordPress and end WordPress tags here, delete what's in between, and then paste that piece of code that I just copied from here, right? So paste all of this into here. And once that's done, you can save the changes, go back to your WordPress panel. And now we are ready to move on to step three, the final step. So if you refresh your browser, you should now see under your settings option a network settings and network setup um, links. So let's just have a look at network settings. Um, and this allows you to manipulate uh, the settings uh, give, to give your network of sites uh, a title, a generic title that can be changed on each new site you add, to add a word, uh, an admin email, and then to to basically control some settings on new registrations and notifications and things like that. All this is fairly straightforward. Just read through it uh, yourself. Do note the upload settings. This is kind of crucial. This allows you to control how much data you can upload to each subsite you create. But I want to go back to the dashboard, and you'll see now that you've got uh, a link called My Sites, and then under that, you've now got a list of your sites. I've only got one, which is my main WP Living site, but I also have a Network Admin button. If you click the Network Admin, you now can manipulate from here things that control all of your sites and you can create new sites by going to the sites link and add new it will now become a subdomain of your main domain so in my case it's my main domain is wpliving.net and if i add um, a, a new site uh, let me say call it test uh, test site and i'll use the wpliving email address and I'll also call it test site here, and that's what that's where it will show wpliving.net forward slash test site. That's where my new site will be. If I add that, it's now added, and I can see under my sites I've got test site here. I can go to the dashboard, and this is the dashboard for that new site. So I've started now uh, to create a network, and here I can change the theme for that particular site, I can change the plugins that are relevant to it, and all the the manipulations that you'd expect with a single WordPress install. If you want to manipulate, add new themes, new plugins, and so on, you have to now do that via the network admin. So go to the dashboard of the network admin and basically add themes here and validate them or activate them for all your sites. So everything. So you've got to think like that now. Any manipulation you want to do has to be done globally for all your network. But that in, is basically how to install a WordPress network in three simple steps.